a massive amount of thinking, like truly stupendous amount of thinking, has gone into sex without purpose, without procreation, without procreation, which, which, which is actually quite a silly action in the absence of procreation. It's it's a bit silly. Well, so why are you doing it? Because it makes the limbic system happy. That's why. That's why. But it's pretty absurd, really. <laughs> well, the whole of existence is pretty absurd in some kind of sense. Yeah. But, but, but I mean, this is a lot of computation has gone into how can I do more of that? You're going to see my hair going through a very awkward phase of uh, growing yourself out. But it's tied to my power level, gentlemen. It's tied to my power level. So as my hair gets longer, I will also increase in power. And gentlemen, today's video is in reference to a YouTuber called Destiny. I'm sure you have seen this making the rounds, but a brief little summary. This is an individual who made the rounds on your notorious red pill uh, podcast, fresh and fit, uh, whatever podcast, propagating that polyamory. Uh, open relationships are you know, the way forward in the modern world, 2020, 2021, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, he's in a little bit of hot water or in a difficult situation at the moment, as his open relationship polyamorous situation has come back to bite him very firmly on his blue bottom. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll play this video here, which I believe may describe this in a in, in, in a better way here, I'll just come back. We can watch God, this together. God forbid this happens. Will it be fun if this open relationship ends up causing things to fall apart down the line? If one of you guys finds yourself in a... Uh, so in I'm just going to pause it here. This is uh, a video that's been spliced together with some of the recent developments in this relationship. And I believe this is one from his uh, Discord. Um, I'll have a small conversation when I'm back about things. I'm not going to nuke Melina who I believe is his wife. So they are they are married, but they have an open marriage. But the last two months and two weeks have been a massive mind for me, watching her become obsessed with a toxic, abusive guy. When, uh, when I visited Sweden last, uh, he gave Mel, Mel an ultimatum to divorce me and then threatened to off himself when she didn't do it. Among 20 other abusive manipulation thing, uh, manipulative things he's done and endlessly made excuses for him so i'm out and i believe this is the individual here who's uh toxic and abusive uh very in interesting physiognomy here i don't imagine that this individual well I, I can certainly see this individual proposing that he would um take a brief and well, not brief but a quick exit from this world is that wrong to say is that uh, maybe i'll skip over this part let's continue with the video here so to speak, with no, some, that, with yeah. hold on, with somebody who you might find yeah. a deeper connection with than the other person. Like if that causes the relationship to, to fall apart, that probably wouldn't be very fun. No, it would be horrible. Um, and it'd be and who's this from? So Destiny Josh yeah, me discovering boundaries was the death knell in this relationship. Yeah, boundaries are important for a functional relationship, my friend. Um why this proves every point I've ever made. Girls can leave you for jobless, manipulative, manipulative losers if they just play their cards right. Yeah, I wanted a massive therapy session to see if I could express myself better and iron out some boundaries, but it's hard for me to ask anything if I've been a pushover for many years. Yeah, this this is this is such a huge problem, and um, I, I, you know, essentially the reasons why I believe polyamory open relationships never work because they're built on a foundation of no respect. If you have, if you respect your other person in, 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 in the relationship, you're going to set some boundaries, you're going to set some parameters whereby you can uphold the integrity of the relationship. And as an extension, the integrity of the individual. And if you're, if, if you, you don't build a house on sand, you know, it's going to fall through eventually. I mean, maybe you have some times in the sun, but the longevity of the relationship is never going to work if you've built it on an unstable foundation. And that's fundamentally what this individual was doing and preaching to this multi, you know, different social media outlets, fresh and fit, whatever podcast, Twitter, YouTube, that, hey, polyamory is the way forward because we have parameters now in the modern Western world whereby you could have sex without any consequence, which is simply not true. And one of the fundamental premises and axioms in which he's building his argument around polyamory and an open relationship but it does not it does not work as we'll learn in, in a moment i'll share my obsidian map there are no there's no situations where you're 
you're free from consequence, especially when you're talking about something as uh, as, as important as sex in a uh, relationship dynamic. Sad. Do you guys have a high degree of confidence that your marriage will last for decades? I mean, yeah. I married her without a prenup, so I <laughs> hope so. <laughs> okay, or else this motherfucker's gonna be. <laughs> My wife fucks other guys. Married her without a prenup, and um, you know, on, on a very kind of spiritual and human level, I have a lot of compassion for this other individual who is suffering, unfortunately, the, uh, unfortunately, the consequences of, you know, their naivety. And, you know, I wish Destiny all the best and I hope he can get through this particular arduous period in his life without any, um, you know, severe consequences to, you know, his living circumstances, his emotional health and his character. Uh, fundamentally, I think this serves as a learning experience for not only him, but other men who are naive to believe that they can pursue polyamory in an open relationship without any emotional consequences. And I think as I preface with that Elon Musk clip, it's men that believe that they can separate pleasure from procreation without any consequence. And we'll explore that now. Okay, well, first, gentlemen, let's let's double down on fundamentally what we're trying to address here. And, you know, the, the, the first clip that I mentioned was this idea that sex without procreation is completely pointless. Now, I don't believe it's too black and white. I believe the answer is very, very nuanced. Let's first take, I suppose, Destiny's answer here, which is the idea that you can have sex without procreation, you can indulge in pleasure, and there can be minimal consequences. The argument is spearheaded by this idea that modern technology uh, with sex can now be viewed, uh, or sex can now be viewed rec recreationally, pardon me. So you can use other people for pleasure and share pleasure without any consequence of children because you have contraception, because you have condoms, because you have the pill, because you... I mean, some people even argue that abortions, which is a hedonistic idea, in my personal opinion, is, you know, is, is the last barrier towards this, uh, you know, this in, in engagement of sex without consequence. Oh, we always have that. We can always get rid of the kid if, uh, if these things happen. We can absolve ourselves as all responsibility. So first and foremost, I, I believe that this diminishes the sanctity of sex, of... Look, if you think, if you think about one of the pillars that is essential in monogamy is the exclusivity of of sex of intercourse and if you remove that if you pursue an open relationship if you pursue promiscuity then you know by by the very nature of what you're engaging in you're devaluing that particular act especially with if the fact that you know you're not you're not establishing it to to create life to create children it's also important to remember that women can still get pregnant with contraception i think previously i mentioned people can get uh, pregnant without contraception, but no, it's only women. It's only women that can get pregnant. Um, what about disease as well? I think this is one of the ones that people don't talk about enough is, you know, they, they, they pursue this very amorous, promiscuous lifestyle, open relationships, polyamory, and um, they never think about where these other people are, are going. And the fact that if they're open in their relationship, the individuals that they're sleeping with certainly are going to be cut from the same cloth. And they're certainly not going to be concerned with hygiene if they feel that pleasure trumps procreation if pleasure trumps the sanctity of of sexual intercourse and that's that's really the perspective that i'm seeing this at is an individual who is pursuing this fundamentally believes that gratification of the self is their god is their highest ideal and there is nothing more important in their lives than their own pleasure and novelty in their own pleasure with multiple partners i believe you can exercise pleasure in a healthy way but in this particular dynamic, I, uh, I believe it's very, very naive because I don't believe that there's any, anything in this world that's free from, from consequence, especially when you're talking about something as, uh, as important as sex. Another argument is that human beings are naturally promiscuous. Suppressing this isn't natural. We should enjoy this, this pleasure. Now, animals are naturally promiscuous. I suppose you can go into the nuances around which animals, animals are more pro promiscuous than others. And there is a, uh, there is a misnomer here that we are our feelings we aren't our feelings we experience feelings we experience desire but we don't have to identify with the desire you can get angry if somebody cusses you out or says something mean about you doesn't mean you have to punch them in the face i mean you probably go to jail but you can see in that very easy example that just because you feel something or just because you can do something doesn't mean that you ultimately should do something now there is another argument, and probably the argument that I lean towards more is that sex without procreation is, you know, fundamentally pointless. My answer is a little bit more nuanced than that, but we recognize that without modern intervention and technology, that sex primarily serves as a process for family and furthering the lineage 
of the human uh, race. I suppose on the no side, you can make an argument that we're no longer in a point now where where we, we should be too concerned about whether or not we're going to die off as a species. But now saying that, there is this uh, particular particular word that is uh, making the rounds called dinks, which is around this idea that there are modern couples who are choosing to save their income to spend on themselves and you know gratification of the senses, eating food, snacks, buying expensive things, materialism fundamentally at the cost of not having you know children. So they have that disposable income and their bloodline is fundamentally going to die out. Not quite sure what my personal opinion is uh, on that yet. But again, I don't think we have a we need to worry necessarily around um, us as a species dying out. But I do think the loss of modern families is, is, is not a good thing. Uh, the prime directive for the sexual reflex is children. This strength, uh, this is strengthened, um, or the strength of this re reflex, pardon me, is equal to Maslow, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So I'm sure you're familiar with Maslow's hierarchy of needs. This is a really interesting concept. Listen to this. This is very, very important. And I think in this particular point, this reflects my my views more than any others. And my, my view is that I think adult material, I think the, sati the satiation or the um, confusion of using something like PMO, which is pornography, masturbation, orgasm, tricks the body out of its reproductive needs. So let's, let's just look here at the bottom here, physiological needs. These are basic needs that you as a human being need to meet. Otherwise you are, well, you're in survival mode if you don't have these. If you don't have air, water, food, shelter, sleep, clothing, and your reproductive needs, then, um, then you, you go into panic mode, you go into survival mode. Here's the thing that you need to think about. You are intensely motivated. There is nothing more compelling. There is nothing that drives you more than being in survival, right? If I, if I throttle you through the camera right now, best believe you're gonna fight tooth and nail in order to gasp air, right? If you don't have water, same thing. If you don't have food, same thing. If you don't have shelter, same thing, sleep, clothing, reproduction. The problem becomes when people are satiated with adult material online, it tricks them into thinking that they have love, belonging, intimacy, friendship, and a sense of connection, right? For a moment, for a moment, meaning they're not then motivated to find the real thing in the world. Climbing up this hierarchy by artificial means, I believe is one of the most dangerous things that you can do with your life in the sense that you know, if you're tricking your body that you have your reproductive needs met, you are neutered. You have been nullified. You have become a domesticated, docile little sheep. You are never going to find the motivation to find a real woman because you have tricked your body into thinking that you already have it. And then you don't understand why you're lethargic. You have apathy. You're depressed. You're confused. I'm so confused. Why am I so upset? Yeah, it's because you keep tricking yourself into thinking that you have your basic needs met when you look around and, hey, you don't. You don't have that. And men, again, wondering why they don't have the motivation to be able to go and, and, and do these things that are a little bit more difficult. Pleasure is not the primary outcome. It's an inefficient use of the sexual energy. Simply saying that modern people are forgetting. Modern people are forgetting that, yes, yeah, sex, sex is for children. Sex makes children. I believe the primary purpose of sex is uh, using other people as a means for pleasure. Uh, pair bonding. I'm not saying these things are, are bad. I'm not saying these things are immoral. I'm just saying that I think we've lost sight of what that kind of act is for, and it's for the propagation of family and, and the human race. And it's, it's you know, it's a, it's, it's a little bit sad. I think my perspective runs somewhere down the middle here. I think the thing that I'm fundamentally against is that mindless attachment to pleasure will ruin your life. I don't necessarily think sex without procreation is pointless, but I think sex with the, 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 the primary attachment or the, the primary attachment to pleasure is, a, is an incorrect idea. I'd be more inclined to say that sex is more a medium for pair bonding. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be inefficient with your sexual energies. There are other options. There are things like white tantra. There are things like Carezza, which is, you know, a, a very niche form of intimacy, a niche form of intercourse, whereby you're still getting pleasure, but not to the end where you're, I suppose, being wasteful. I think the distinction I would also make is you have a limbic system, but you are not your limbic system. Your prefrontal cortex must be stronger than your limbic system. Your decision-making, your control must be stronger than your impulsivity, than your reactivity. And the way you do that is you exercise it through mediums like mindfulness practice, breathwork, fasting, 
also accountability groups. Uh, we're starting something new in the uh, in the new year. Gentlemen, on my Patreon, on my VIP Discord channel, we're doing accountability groups where we're holding people accountable to the changes that they want to make in their life. If it's get rid of the adult material in your life, the PMO, and uh, you know, living a life that is free from the cycle of being motivated to change, getting some progress, then relapsing, then being in shame, and then being in apathy for a week, finding the motivation, and then just going through that cycle. I think for me, the accountability is the most powerful thing because sometimes you have to recognize that you by yourself, by your own volition, you're not strong enough. And you need a, you need a group of men who uh, are going to keep each other on the straight and narrow and allow ourselves to change fundamentally for the best. And, you know, we've got a uh, hundred paid members now in our group and, you know, people are making incredible amounts of progress because they're keeping themselves not just socially accountable, but financially accountable to the changes that they're making in their lives. If you need more personal support, I am opening two spaces up in my coaching program on January the 1st, 2024. Applications are in the description below and I would love to see from you. But I, uh, I wonder what your personal perspective is on this gentleman if you believe that, yeah, sex without procreation is completely pointless or if you're maybe more of my opinion that you need to run a middle path knowing that, hey, intercourse can serve as a medium to pair bond. It can serve as a medium to, you know, enjoy your relationship. But I think fundamentally, if you're using each other as a dildo, you're probably more in lust than you are in love. These aren't theories. These are facts. Speak soon.